And now, our feature presentation. The Hypnotic Learning Program. the show. What it be y'all, once again it's Resident 47 coming at you with another album review. And today this is going to be a special 25th anniversary review for one of my favorite albums of all time by one of my favorite bands of all time. And I'm talking about Helium's second album, The Magic City, released on September 9th, 1997. Okay, now this and the precursor of the No Guitars EP were both recorded at the same time. So if you want to hear me go in depth about the making of this album, go watch my No Guitars review and my What You Know About Helium episode. But in a nutshell, in November of 96, they went out to North Carolina into a studio called the Fidelatorium. Started working, working with a new producer named Mitch Easter. And they started really experimenting with production, adding new instruments into their sound. Reinventing their style, but not selling out, staying true to that helium spirit. And this was recorded from the winter of 96 up to the spring of 97. And on September 9th, 1997, they released The Magic City. So here's the album artwork, painted by Mary Timoney herself. I love it. It's this house under like a starry night with a moat and some trees. Pretty dope. In the back, you got your track list, which actually has a barcode this time, like the Dirt of Luck didn't. And then the inside, you get your disc right here, which is pretty similar looking to the No Guitars EP. It's just this blank with a couple drawings. You got your credits right there. And then I like how they did this. They took pictures of the band and then added some watercolors to it to make it look like... A little more surreal, that was dope. And on the inside you got some paintings and drawings with the album lyrics. I like this one the most, that one looks really nice. Okay, so like I said, released on September 9th, 1997. Produced by themselves and Mitch Easter. So I will get this album loaded up. I get my notes loaded up. And uh, I'll start the review. Okay, so track one is Vibrations. <clears throat> Perfect sign into the album. It's just a straightforward rock banger to ease you into what you're about to get into with this record. It, wasn't, it was not a single, but I think it definitely could have been. It's not too heavy, but not too laid back. And the song just mainly runs on like some simple chords and drum breaks, but then the breakdown in the middle with the horns and the keys is a real dope switch up. I really like how that sounds. And Mary Timoney's voice on here, compared to that Dirt of Luck, changed a little bit. It sounds like she has more control over it in this album. And I like the vocal patterns she uses for the verses in this song. Now, like, I'm not gonna try to butcher it, but. Some of the lines that sounded really good with it were, Do you see your outline in the sky? Do you think the planets will collide? And can you see beyond the farthest signs the prophets as they wait in line? They kind of like how she pronounces it, like how she delivers those verses and how she writes the beat with it is very dope. And this definitely could have been a single, like I said, but uh, just wasn't. But Vibrations, one of my favorites on the album for sure. And then next up, we go to track two, which is Leon Space Song. This was the single for the album. And this is, this shit is just so fucking good. The strings on here are so fucking dope. And they perfectly play into the song title. This really just feels like 
like a story night f feeling song. And I love the fucking, um, like that breakdown kind of chorus that she does is, that she does like in between the verses. Like I'll, I'll fucking play because it it's coming up right now. That shit right there, I fucking love that, and how, just how she delivers it. But, um, this does have a video, and, um, it's basically them just, like, pushing this broken down for Taurus into a repair shop, and making it look like a bee, and then they go into space with it. It's, it's kind of corny, I won't, I won't lie. It was based off of this movie called Wild Wheels, where this person takes this fucking Honda into a repair shop, it makes it look like a chariot or something, and then he calls it the Magic City Golden Transit, which is where the album title for this record comes from. So, if you do want to see that video, it'll be in the description. But, uh, don't like the video, but the song is fucking amazing. Hold on, I gotta I got play it one more time. So fucking dope, and Ash kills the bass line after that too. Now I don't care if I get a copyright claim. But um, next up we go to track 3, Ocean of Wine. I usually wait till the end of the review for this reveal, but fuck that. This is far and away my favorite track on the album. One of my favorite songs of all time as well. Very hypnotic sounding, very dreamlike. And the late night vibes are strong with this track. I have this tradition where like, after I get off of work, because I work until 10 p.m. I'll drive home bumping this song. And it's just it just sets the mood. I love the bass line Ash lays down on this track as well. And how Timmy's vocal pattern follows the bass line. And, and um, the second verse she says, says something like, Over the trees in the Mayfair. Uh, that's kind of like a callback to Past Trick where you know, she referenced the Mayfair in that song as well. I don't know what this whole thing about that is. I'd like to know this whole theme of the Mayfair is about. But, um, I love this track, especially, like, in the breakdowns, where, like, those subtle horns come in. Very dope. Definitely plays into, like, that dreamlike feeling I was talking about. And then, the co like, the second half, which is just the chorus, I fucking love it. I gotta play, like, right now. Like, the way Timony sings in this shit... And the keys that come in like around 238 and how too many harmonizes with them. Fucking sick. I love that. So, oh my god. One of my favorite fucking songs. This is... Oh god. Fucking love it. Bomb ass track. I don't think it could have been a single. It definitely feels more like an album cut. But it is definitely my favorite. And it's in my top 10 Helium songs. So, Ocean of Line. Yeah, I love that one. God damn it, I love this next one too. Track 4, Aging Astronauts. <sighs> okay. This definitely carries on with that, like that night, like that cosmic nighttime feeling, like the last two tracks. And this one definitely feels like it could have been a single, like, or at least a B side to Leon Space song. This is another Stargazers theme song. And it's another track that makes you feel like. You're just looking, you're just like, you're just looking up at the stars on like, on like a cold winter night or something. I love the riff that the song starts and ends with. It's the same one. And then the electric pianos that come into the track as well are fucking incredible. Plays in like that spaced out, um, like production. And some of Timony's best songwriting is in this track. Like a couple of lines where she says, um, the same stars that killed you will bring you life. And then... Um, where is it? I'm trying to find it. I ride a plane almost every day. I've seen the freaks lost in the Milky Way. Will we go on until the end? I know it's coming, but I just don't know when. Great songwriting. And, um, yeah, that breakdown at 136, like right here. Fucking fire. Like how... Like how Timmy just fucking sang that with her delivery, and just like those electric pianos that come in after she's done, I love it. And uh, turn it back down. 
And um, we'll go to uh, track five called Medieval People. This is just an instrumental track. It's four minutes, but it kind of feels like an interlude. Pianos on this track are very fucking nice. They sound really polished, but then, get, but then the drums underneath it sound very dusty. And you think it was Mary playing those? But no, it's actually Ash Bowie playing them, and he killed it. And, um, like, there's uh, two different points in this song. There's this beat switch that kind of sounds Nine Inch Nails-ish. Um, and you get, like, these, um, like, these explosion samples going on. But they're actually not samples. Those were used making something called a reverb tank. Um, I didn't know what that was until I read up on it, um, right on my notes for this album. But that was pretty dope. And I like how the song ends with that explosion again, and then the track just echoes out. Fucking dope. Yeah. Just a nice little instrumental track. And then I go up to... Okay, this is a fucking banger. And this definitely could have been a single. Lady of the Fire, track 6. I love this. The sitars in this are just so fucking dope, especially in the intro. And, I mean... And then when they go into that chorus, it just sounds like real grimy. Like the, um, it's like this Dilsimer-ish kind of like instrument going on in the background. I'm just hypothesizing I have no fucking idea what it is. You can hear it better when the drums drop out at the end of the song. But, um, it's fucking dope. Like, um, and like this, and this line that's going on right now, I just love. I can't believe what you just said over my body when you know that I'm dead. I was born underground, I had two horns. Like, catchy songwriting again. And, pff, fucking sick song. One of my favorites on the album. And, one of the grimier moments on the album for sure, especially in the chorus. And it could have had a video too, like, there's no guessing what it would have looked like because, to me, this imagination is a world of its own. But, another Magic City or Hyatt for fucking sure. And then, now we go up to track 7, which is called Lullaby of the Moths. Okay, for me, this is where the album starts to dip a little bit. I'm not a fan of this song. Everything leading up to it has just had like a consistent sound. Just spaced out, hypnotic, dreamlike. And they're all fucking solid songs. Then there's this which comes in, and it sounds like a lot more Middle Eastern. Especially with those strings. And it just sticks out like a sore thumb. So, is it, uh, yeah. All by the moths is just a no for me. And then we go up to, um... Track 8, which is The Revolution of Hearts. This is Killiam's most progressive moment ever. The song clocks in at 8 minutes and 1 second. And... Not one of my favorites either, I'll, I'll be honest. Killiam has pulled off progressive shit before. Well, like we will see it later in the album. Like, especially in the past with, like, fucking, like, tracks like Lucy. Six and a half minute song. Over the Wind and the Rain on Dirt of Luck. Like, Baby Vampire Made Me on Pirate Proof. They have fucking killed it with progressive songs before. But, um, this one just is this, uh, it just kind of gets stuck in itself. But, at the same time, it does move along. But, um, I, well, I was, I think the main complaint for me is that there's just not enough songwriting. And that was my big fucking beat with the No Guitars EP, like, those are just, like, really, like, laid-back songs, and they didn't really have much songwriting to them. But, um, it's kind of funny because Eric Timmy, in an interview in 97, said this was her favorite track on the album, so... I can see why, so I can't really knock it too much. On a really quick, I was bugging when I said this song gets stuck in itself. It does move along, but I just don't really pick up on it because... You said not a lot of sawing for this track, but um, that's yeah, track eight, the Revolution of Hearts, and um, on the track list, if you can see that, minus the glare, it says um, parts one and two. Uh, it's it's made together as one full song, but on vinyl, um, the A side ends with part one, and then the B side begins with part two. I don't know what that's about. I think it's probably just a uh, make room on the vinyl, but yeah. Now we go to one of my other fair fucking songs. Like, oh my god. Ancient Crime. This is... Yeah, another fucking burner of a track. 
This definitely could have been a single as well. The rhythm in this track is sick as fuck. I love how Timmy rides the beat. And um, just very catchy like the way that this track was put together. And so uh, one thing real quick. My people already know how much of a diehard I am of Cat Beyond. One reason I love this song is because the opening riff is very similar to the opening riff in Catastrophe Your Wife Boomerang Doll, at least to me. And my dream collab in rock would be a Babes in Toyland and Helium Supergroup in 1995. Like the Nemesis Sisters Dirt of Luck era. And um, I know it's like comparing like day to night, but the way Cat and Mary's were singing on their those albums around that time, I don't know, I feel like it kind of could have kind of worked, but again, it's very out there. But, um, Ancient Crime, I fucking love this song. The riffs, the drums, the way Timmy, like, delivers every fucking lyric. So dope. This should have had a video, this should have had a single. And, pff, wow, I love that. Uh, God damn, I love that. Okay, moving on to track 10 now, Cosmic Rays. Decent track. This track has a chilled out spring feeling like I get it from Vibrations and Ancient Crime. Got some strings coming in on the last verse too. Um, just not, I don't have much to say about this track because I didn't get anything from it. I don't have like anything on my notes about the song specifically. So we'll go on to the next one. Track 11, Devil's Tear. This is a pretty dope track. This one is the one that um, crept up on me the most. I like the way Timmy sings here. Like, the vocal melody and deadpan delivery works so fucking well on this track. And, um, the breakdown of the song ends with this sick as fuck. Like, uh, let me see if I can find it. Yeah, here you go. Fucking dope. I'm still gonna get a copyright strike on this, but, you know, who cares. Anyway, um... Yeah, I just, yeah, uh, what did you say on this track? A heart of gold, a heart of tax. This is the line I had written down. I like that because it's like a, it's like some dope wordplay. Like, it's a play on that term, heart attack. That was pretty dope. And then, go up to track 12 now, which is called Clementine. This shit is a lot more cinematic than the rest of the album. Uh, this is like their experimentation at the forefront. And it, it feels less like a rock song and more like an orchestra. And that's why I feel it's a lot more cinematic. It's a dope track. The strings and the guitars that come through like 137. So hypnotic and dark. Very um, very dope right there. And um, go to uh, the penultimate track, track 13, Blue Rain Soda. It's another instrumental track, but it's the shortest track on the album, 1 minute 50 seconds. I think it's just as good as the other instrumental track, Medieval People. It's basically just all synths, and it's very good. And this really plays into, like, the medieval themes of the album. I like those, uh, like, those clad, clad kind of sounding synths. And, like, the flute synth, like, the flutes that come in, like, at around 20 seconds. So dope. Kind of very reminiscent of, like, the Dirt of Luck, like, the melodies and the keys. Feels like, the, um, something we made during, like, that era, but... Sounds really good on here. Uh, hold up. And then the album signs off on track 14, Walk Away. Perfect sign off to the album. This is how ending tracks are done. I love how it starts out with those two layered riffs. And they, they, this has a lot of distortion on this song. Like, compared to the rest of the album. And when Timmy comes in and starts singing over it. It fucking gives me goosebumps, and they bring it back again at 1.42. I just, that, 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 cha-chow, cha-chow, walk away. I love that. But the, like, like, I don't know, I'm losing my train of thought, but Mary Timmy's cadence on this track is fucking dope. And this is what I was talking about. Like, this is them doing the progressive shit and making it work. This track has a lot of different twists and turns. Mary to me keeps a good amount of vocal presence in here, so I don't like drift off into some other thoughts when I listen to it. And um, the riff that comes in at 517 is so fucking dope, and it sounds really fuzzy. 
And uh, she just goes off on the guitar on this track. It's very dope. And it's a very dope exit from the Magic City. Where's that shit? There you go, there it is. Without me butchering it. But, um, yeah, that is the Magic City from September 9th, 1997. And in a nutshell, one of my favorite albums of all time. It's in, a, it's in my top five albums from 1997. And it was a great way for Helium to go out. And the style, like the sound and the style of it, it's a 180 from the Dirt of Luck, but it still feels like Helium. It's this experimentation done the right way. I love all the strings and the keys and like the other instruments they played with in here. And it makes up for the absence of distortion in most of the songs. Except for like Walk Away and Revolution of Hearts and like stuff like that. And Mary Timmy also went on a different route in the lyrics. She started writing more about like space and dragons and going to different places and all that. Because she started studying the writings of someone named Joni Mitchell. And that definitely played a role in the songwriting. And one thing I have to say I respect about Helium is every album of theirs sounds completely different. Like Pirate Prude doesn't sound like Dirt of Luck. Uh, Magic City doesn't sound like Super Bowl Plus. And sadly, this was their very last studio album they put out. Not their final studio, not their final release overall, because they put out Ends with Dana in 2017. But um, I wish they would have put out like a third album in 1999 or 2000. That would have been fucking crazy. But um, my rating of this album is a four out of five. There's a couple of moments in here where the album kind of dies, where the album kind of dips for me, like on, like on a little by the moths and Revolution of Hearts and Cosmic Rays. But everything else I fucking love. My top three tracks from this album are uh, Vibrations, Ancient Crime, and Ocean of Wine. And I'm real quick before I sign off on this video. Last week, I just recently launched my Patreon page. And I'm going to be doing um, some pretty crazy shit on there. Like, you'll be seeing videos a day or two early when you subscribe. You'll also be getting exclusive content like throwaway beats I make. Or like any like album remasters I make, you'll be getting those. And and um, there's some more content will be coming in there. I just got to start brainstorming more. But it's a very cheap... The subscription, $5 a month gives you everything. So I'll have that in the description if you want to support this movement because I'm not monetized at all and I'm not making a fucking dime off this shit. So that's that. I'm not forcing out to, that's your decision. But uh, that's a great way to show your support. Anyways, that's it for this album review. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Definitely join the Patreon if you... um. Want to hear? Want to see some exclusive dopeness? And until then, I'm out of here. This